That's a good point. Right, we're yeah. cutting into this bit here. <laughs> Tell you what's refreshing about your office. Street level. Yeah. You don't have to go into a lobby. Right. Sign in, press an elevator, go up 50 floors. It's easy to find. Easy right to here. find, and you're right there on the street. Your desk is right the door that opens up. Yeah, we have desks right, you know, right conference room on the street level, which is fun. Uh, I see a lot of activity going so back. So different to we try to do a different concept, but we try to do that with the whole firm. We try to do it with yeah. our marketing. We try to do it with our branding. It's um, much more... With the people we hire. It's just... I don't know if modern is probably not the right word, but... No, it's not. Uh, and family isn't the right. It's much more one-to-one. -one. You it walk is. in and you're not going through a secretary to get to a paralegal right. to get to the... Blah, 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 blah. I mean, the whole concept of the business is personal relationships with the people. <laughs> And we are back between two edits on Las Olas with Andrew High. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, I'm good. Lawyer extreme extraordinaire? Correct, lawyer and financier now. Of? Luxury Law Group and Luxury Financial Group. It is which we're sitting right out in front of. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of people will know who you are. I would have thought your reputation precedes you in this industry. Oh, we've been doing it for 13 years now, so yeah. 13 I think years? Wow. Met most people, not all, but most. So. Okay. So how did you get started as a lawyer? I always wanted to be a lawyer, so it was just kind you of did? a means to an end for me. Yeah, yeah. Even? From when I was about four years old, yeah. <clears throat> I was a strange kid. <laughs> who, dream, who wants to be a lawyer when they're a kid? I just did. You know, I watched a lot of TV and saw lawyers on TV and thought it was cool and just did it. So. Oh, okay. Well, is that from like... <sighs> NCIS and... That was before that, yeah. I used to watch a lot of Matlock on TV. Matlock? So he's <laughs> responsible for... Matlock is responsible for this. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Bloody hell. So... Wow, so you never had any aspirations to be a pop star or... Well, or like, or... I have a letter for, that I wrote to myself that a teacher sent to me when, when I was 12. And at that point, I wanted to be either a professional basketball player or an international lawyer. So I think I came pretty close. You came pretty close, yeah. yeah. You haven't got the height. No, I don't have the and basketball. The wrong skin but... <laughs> so you're originally from here? No, Philadelphia. Ah. Philadelphia originally. Okay. College in Baltimore, law school in Miami. <clears throat> and... Oh, okay, and that's how you got down to Florida. Yep. Never left. Never left. So... Bloody hell. And you've always been in boating or has it always been No. I mean as a lawyer I've always been in boating. Um, you know. Now, law, I know your company's called Luxury Law. Do you ever, what's the opposite to luxury? Bog standard? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> what kind of law is that? Is that just? Uh, it'd be like pro bono work, you know? Did you ever do Indigent that? law? No, never done it. Never I done. thought you were required as a lawyer, as you were trained to do. Uh, you can, there's, there's different avenues you can do. You can do a certain number of pro bono years, or hours a year. You can donate money. Um, to charity, or you can donate time to a charity. Is this so what's kind of like your that? Just to just to be in good standing with the bar. It's it's a oh, recommendation. Okay. It's not a requirement. It's all right. right. Tell me about the bar because I I've seen the books. Yeah. Is it really that? It's a daunting? lot of books, and it's pretty daunting. Yeah. <laughs> How many years is it? Eight. Well, you take three years of law school, and then you take the test. So, and the test is two days. Um, there's a state portion and a federal portion. And, and you have to go back every year and get like... No, but every two or three years you have a certain number of credits you have to do, like continuing education. So as long as you meet oh, okay. those, you it's just... It's like the ar architectural Yeah. You have to go back. Different like finance does this, or uh, insurance does the same thing. You know, you just have to continuing education. Good lord. It's not fun. It's just yeah. <laughs> something that you do. So luxury law, you were at a previous law firm. Yes. Before. Started at a law firm called Hill Betts and Nash, which is based out of New York, an uh, old, old law firm. And then um, we bounced around a little bit, and then we ended up opening up Luxury Law, Danielle and I. In the most prestigious spot. Yeah, we are the only retail law firm in all of Las Olas Boulevard. So. Retail law firm? Meaning retail space. Right, okay. Um, there Come are other law firms. Buy yeah. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was not easy to find her or secure the space. So. so as a business owner, what, what were your challenges? Uh, making money. Right. <laughs> keeping money, you know, hiring staff, keeping staff. Because I, yeah, so the staffing issue down here, it's the same when it comes to legal services as it yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's but, tough. Um, you know, it's hard to find good help. We've got great help, thankfully, but, um, you know, every once in a while you run into some 
bad actors that, you know we had yeah. to get rid of so that's just the way it goes Blimey. so now you do <clears throat> super yacht law yes well, yachts of all kinds we do any any size yacht that might need the owner might need assistance so um, from corporate ownership to um, to uh, new construction to uh, just about anything really <laughs> we'll handle all of that <laughs> Get to move down. <laughs> Can we just get you to move down a, a little? Oh, we, <laughs> no, oh sorry. <laughs> sorry, we're just filming here. That's all right. There. Still That's perfect. It? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> Actually, she stopped in the coming, so that's good. <laughs> okay, and we'll pick this up from there. <laughs> um, yeah, so we handle every kind of boat law. From little boats to big boats and wherever people need help. And this is what, signing contracts? Signing contracts, um, forming LLCs to own the boats, to you know, limit liability, tax so, advice. All right, so go on then. So when you buy a boat, you need to have a, the liability offset through a, a, co a company. I it's a better idea to do it that way if you can do it. Um, okay. So we recommend that everybody does it over a certain size and value range. Um, most of our clients do. And that makes it a bit more. It just shields a lot of yeah potential liability. You know, if you think about a boat, it's like a floating house that can run into other things and knock it over or you know hurt people. Yeah. Or, <laughs> so if you can pick up your million dollar house and knock it around the street a little bit, that's that's what a boat is. So you know you want to kind of limit the ability to. And this is happen. this is then spurred into you opening up financial. And that spurred into financial group, right? So for that um, we. Uh, <laughs> A lot of activity here on Los Angeles Boulevard. <laughs> um, yeah, so the success of the law firm, we just capitalized into luxury financial. So for that company, we're doing boat deals, a uh, quarter of a million dollars and up. Um, and the sky's kind of the limit on that um, for financing, so. And that's teamed up through like a third party bank or something? Well, so right, we're essentially mortgage brokers. So we take your business and uh, okay. Noel, who runs the finance company, has 22, 23 years banking experience, and so she knows what bank will take that, you know. So what's work. going on third wall then? Third well, panel. Uh, to be decided. That's to there's got to be something else. <laughs> coming, coming soon. It's got to be insurance. Well, it's not going to be insurance, um, but there could be a, a land aspect of what we're doing. Um, uh, okay. So, because uh, I think real property. That was something I've, I've. I, I know from the industry, but it's the relationship. So once you've got, I guess, right. a client, they tr and they trust you. They I mean, trust so we you built, spent years building up, you know, our client list and base, and we got a good group of people. And mm. between that and just business relationships, banks and insurance companies, or whatever that that set up Luxury Financial Group, and yeah, hopefully be pretty successful. So we like our little location here. And you've um, also got one up. We've got one in it? Stewart. Uh, we've got one in Washington D.C. and one out in the Hamptons. So what? that's our summer. That's our summer office. <laughs> oh, so you're getting to live the life. We do. We we live the life our clients live. <laughs> Go back and forth. You have to. It's, well, it's part of the. Uh, we found they like it. You know, they like to be. Like to be near. They like lawyer. us to be where where, where they are. You know? Yeah. So, wow. Four difference. offices. Yeah. In what? Two or three years. Yeah. This is our now our fourth going into our fourth year of existence. So I think we've just completed. I think the third year of, of uh, and first year for luxury financial. So. Oh, well done. Yeah, not too Bloody bad. Bloody hell, that's not, that's, <laughs> oh, I hate to think where your rent is. <laughs> hey, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. there. He doesn't sign a contract unless he knows what he's signing, right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, so, okay, so now you're, in this industry, you're probably the closest to the client next to the broker. I would think so, yeah. We develop really close relationships with people, like friendships, you know, long term. Yeah. So um, you will know some of the dirty details that we never get to hear. We do, most of them. <laughs> Can you, without... Getting yourself wrapped up into a legal issue. Uh, <laughs> Expand on any of those. See. I can tell you um, that I had met a client out several times over the course of several years with um, his wife, and knew them and were friendly with them. Um, and at a separate point, a law partner of mine at the firm that we used to work with introduced me to this person's wife. But the wife was not, the real wife was not the same wife who I had met at all of these parties all of these years um, and known. So it was very awkward to say, oh, it's nice to finally meet you, you know. 
Oh, right. I had met the other Mrs. So and So at least five times over the years. So which one was the real one? The the one I met, the which one. was a much older model uh, <laughs> than the one I had previously met. <laughs> so. I always find that actually, it's very inconsiderate when people put you in that position. <laughs> It was, it was very uncomfortable. Because I've worked with a number of guys who, when they're away, you know, they do things. And then when you meet their, their true spouse, you're like, <laughs> God, fuck, am I, am I supposed to keep this secret now? Or am I, it's where tough. am very, I? Very delicate, yeah. right? And so it was, uh, it was an awkward moment. <laughs> dear. So, I mean, when it comes to, you know, fires on boats or things like that, the investigative process of that. How involved sure. do you get with that? Depends. Um, you know, we've been involved from the day after it happens. Um, to, uh, You're pretty much the first phone call. Well, the insurance company is usually the first phone call, but then we get called after that, and it, especially if there's a question as to what happened. You see soon, they'll be able to just call one, one number and get it all. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe someday. But Hi, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a trifecta here. <laughs> yeah, right? That would be, I guess that would be ideal. Um, no, we, I mean, but we do get involved. I mean, there's plenty of times where captains leave stoves on and fall asleep drunk and you know, yeah. it becomes an insurance question as to... So here's one question that, that, uh, um, that got posed, not question, but one um, hypothesis. Something that happened on a boat. Yeah. Um, sexual advances. Do you mean the case that just came out? Or no. The, okay. Is there a case that's recent? Oh yeah, that one. The, well, there was a rape that just got uh, awarded $70 million uh, by a judge down here in South Yeah. Florida. All right, so not going to not the that justification of the, the payout, but the, the circumstances of that, it's been happening on boats since day one. It is, and I mean, I know that most boats, probably the vast majority of boats, don't have the right safeguards in place to uh, prevent those things from happening and so people need to look we've been getting phone calls you know people need to look at their policies and procedures and make sure people don't get put in bad situations like where that kind of thing can happen but that case was where it was another crew member right it was another crew member right, right. so I, I was speaking to a couple of people who um, worked for clients in a certain re geographical region and they are used to owning the people that work for them right right <laughs> I think I know what you mean. Okay, <laughs> and so they had, they felt it was their... Their right. Their right. Yeah, right, right. And they found it, because they have their passport and they have no way of getting off the boat, they felt very uh, vulnerable in that position. Um, so it, it's it's going to be something that comes... Oh, I think it's going to happen a, a lot more. You know, yeah. I think now that it, it... Just the environment that we're in now, it's just different and people will come out, you know, yeah. people feel empowered and I think people finally feel the right level of support that they can come out and do those things and that they're not going to get run out of, you know, the country or the industry or, yeah, you need hope not the, com the country, but, uh, it's, yeah, I was speaking to Colin Squire of um, Yachting Matters and he, yeah. he used to be a captain on a boat and he was describing this fight he had with a chef. And, cleavers at each other's throat, he got his jaw smashed off. He said, but you know, that was back in the 70s. That was, you picked up crew off the, um, the dock and right, right. went off to sea. And if they were no good, you kind of lumped, well, you could throw them off. <laughs> it's, a weird, it's a weird balance, right? Because the, the owner expects to have a certain level of privacy and, and a fun aspect to it. But yet, on the other hand, and not to say that sexual harassment is fun in any way, but um, meaning a, a relaxed atmosphere, but at the same point, yachting as a whole across the board has become more professional. The brokers are more professional. Yeah. Um, you know, lawyers are using more deals than ever, uh, which is good for us. And, you know, the crew is more professional, right? It's not just picking somebody up off the dock anymore. These are like, they're professional crew operations that mm -hmm. staff these boats. Um, and you expect this level of professionalism that anybody that we would hire would, would have. Uh, it's, it's somebody said, there's a there's a case to be argued that we're, we're becoming overregulated, but then on the flip side, there's a case to be argued that it was time. Right. And so in this the whole industry and in, in not you know it's regulated more in Florida than it is almost anywhere else other than California. So really the uh, you know the industry still got as a whole as a country has a long way to go. Yeah. Now are you involved with the lobbying? Part, no, part no, we don't get too involved in that. Because uh, um, there was um, oh, I forget. Was it MISF that were doing, you know, building up the, the case for the marine industry to be actually validated as a meaningful 
So Danielle was involved with that. Um, That's right. She was the president of MISF, and they were heavily involved in trying to promote the marine industry, and and they were pretty successful with it, I think. Um, yeah, but, but the case must be coming, must be getting larger and larger every year now. It is, and I mean, the FYBA, now the IYBA, which is the Yacht Brokers Association, um, has done a great job, you know, hiring professional lobbyists, going to Washington, and making, trying to make real changes. Yeah. Know? I mean, they started back with the sales tax cap, um, yeah. which was a few years ago now, and then the refit tax cap, uh, and now they're pushing some changes to the Jones Act, which is a federal statute, uh, but that limits yachts. So, they, I mean, the whole industry is just much more professional, even than when I started. Mm. Um, and there was just an article that came out yesterday about lawyers being more involved in more deals than, than ever, you know, before. So, good, good for business. Good for you. <laughs> Time to raise our rates, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was uh, somebody, I don't know if it was you who told me this, but you always want to pay as much as you can for a lawyer as an hourly rate. Because the, the lawyer that's willing to go cheap isn't worth going to. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, fun, there's a middle ground there. You know, we try not to be the most expensive, but we're certainly not the cheapest. But, yeah. uh, you wouldn't go with like the cheapest heart surgeon, you know, or um, the cheapest wealth exactly. manager if you were, you know, investing, let's say, $5 million in something. So, you know, it makes sense that you wouldn't use the cheapest lawyer. Yeah. You don't want a bargain basement of anything. That's know? true. It falls apart just like <laughs> anything else. Right. Well, we're going to come to an end now, but there's going to be a disclaimer part down here <laughs> where uh, <laughs> Andrew has to sign Nothing off. will be construed as legal advice. <laughs> you can't sue me for anything. Anything I said is pure personal, opi <laughs> yeah. personal opinion, personal not opinion. Repre representative of the company. Or... I'm not even a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Beautiful Los Olds Boulevard. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what.